Yeah. Ah. Ah. Echo. Got to ring it out. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, so uh, everybody, if everybody has a USB key, uh, you go ahead and get Vagrant and VirtualBox uh, installed if you haven't already, um, or if you don't have it already. Um, yeah, would, if, you already, if you do already have Vagrant, you can't. You should be able to just Vagrant. I would recommend maybe if you have like VirtualBox 5.0, then you might want to just run the installer for 4.3, which is on on the flash drives, because I think 5.0 is going to mess up. Yeah, if, if you Vagrant up successfully, then you're good to go. Five, whatever, is probably fine. Oh, yeah, that was probably just building it. It probably yeah. works fine on that. Well, he has a PC, so he's not going to gray screen with <laughs> all his ten and Oh, is it OSX? <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> uh, yeah, so does anybody, yeah, where's everybody at? Like, so, so we, when we did this last year, we kind of had, like, open discussion. Like, if you have some problem or something, just shout it out. Um, you know, we've got plenty of time here. So if you have some, you have a question or you need help or, or anything, just shout it out and every, the people who aren't talking are going to be walking around and uh, trying to help people out. Um, so if you, if you do get behind or, you know, something doesn't work for you, definitely, definitely uh, raise your hand or shout it out. Um, if you don't understand why we're doing something, well, you know, we'll do our best to explain. Uh, but you should definitely... Make sure that you make sure that you're clear on what we're doing here. So if anybody doesn't have a USB key, uh, people just coming in, the the USB keys are up here. There's also some stickers if you uh, if you want some designate or uh, Cosmos stickers. The OpenStack project, not the show with Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> it's a good show, huh? I was hoping you'd have a have that like that cute Neil deGrasse Tyson picture, where he's like, yeah. huh. oh, that'd be awesome. Okay, um, where's everybody at? What what are you know? Is ever I mean, does everybody have Vagrant and VirtualBox installed, and we're already up and running? I highly doubt that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah. If you need if you need a USB key, you're just coming in. Uh, flag Graham down. Yeah. So you'll just want to run the appropriate Vagrant and VirtualBox installers for your OS. They should be on that key. Oh yeah, JK. Yeah, I just copied every. Well, I, yeah, copied I just every, copied the whole. Thing. I copied everything over into a folder and just did that. There you go. So, but then again, I use Emacs, so that says something else. Why? The, it was ridiculously easy. <laughs> so, where's everybody at? Are we uh, installing Vagrant? Installing VirtualBox? Have you already finished the demo? Have you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you on the plane home? What's? <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I, see, I saw a couple of people said they're still installing Vagrant VirtualBox, so we'll probably probably give it a minute here. Have some stickers, stickers. <laughs> Dude, I love being mic'd. Like everybody's listening to me. Like I don't even I don't even just whisper to you. Everybody can hear me. Yes. It'll, it'll work. Yes, it'll work. Absolutely. <laughs> You'll be fine. Thank you. It was what a virtual box had on our website. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you want to brave the hundred K Wi Fi, you can go and download it.
This is the Cosmos one. He's going to come around and think, whoa, feedback, feedback. So where are we at? Are you, uh, are you all installed? You ready to rock? All right, you're, you're vagrant up. Yeah. Uh, not familiar with Vagrant Up. So here you mentioned the CD Vagrant Up and Vagrant SSH. Uh, mm -hmm. I need an SSH client. You on Windows? Yeah. What does he do? He's on Windows. You just open, open up Sigma. Oh, Sigma? Okay, I have Sigma. PowerShell? Yeah, all right, cool. It's the uh, it's a new it's a new uh, global global load balancing project. It's going to work with Designate. So. Gr Graham is the PTL of both. So. What's up? Stickers. Yeah. You bet. <laughs> oh geez, that's me breathing into the mic. Oh no, it's Eric. Okay, cool. Hey, how are we all doing Just over here? Just keeping an eye on everybody. You guys got uh, everybody okay? You guys got things going? Good. So show of hands. How how are you guys going along? It's, if you got the Vagrant box up and you can Vagrant SSH in, you can raise your hand. Keep them up, everybody. We're proud of you guys. Let's give you guys a hand. Way to go. You're doing great. So Stay we'll give a cu couple more minutes just to make sure everybody else is squared the away. The whole reason you're here. Let's be and if, uh, sorry, what's that? <laughs> I think that's, that's a good point. I got, I got you, homie. You bet. And if you just walked you in, um, in I'll just walk over there. You take them all, man. Here. Because you can keep that. USB key. You bet. We're not going to ask for these back. <laughs> Here, can you toss me a key here? Yeah. Can you toss? Oh, okay. You guys oh. got it? That's cool. You need a key? Hey, Graham, do you have a key? He was behind you. You ready? This is, this is scary. <laughs> Good job. How are we doing here, folks? You're good? Sweet. We're good. Anybody else We're is still working through the virtual box? Okay. Do you have like a Sigwin or? And if you do have it up and you're interested or in poking around, don't. No, just kidding. You guys, like, you can, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and, you know, see what processes are running and maybe see if you see a log file someplace that looks interesting and that sort of thing. Hashtag hack the, hack the planet. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are on Windows who are confused. <laughs> hey, what's up? Stickers. There you go. There you bet. You want stickers? You ready? Or do you actually yeah. need help? No. <laughs> You want stickers. <laughs> yeah. Naturally. What's up? Cool. You know, you don't need the, the installer if you've already got Vagrant installed. If you're really good uh, with you probably have VirtualBox too, Q so Emu, you can do so that. You pop on to, uh, copy the, you can either copy, you probably don't even need to copy those files off. So, um, Yeah, you need, or you need to get, uh, so just go to uh, CD uh, slash uh, volumes. Um, or it's USB disk or something. Yes, yes. It was pretty slick, the whole process was pretty automated. Or you can uh, just bake it up and bake it SSH. It was multi, multi-platform, man. You can... 
Wait, 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 eventually. <laughs> you act like it didn't work the first time. I'll get you a shell into the box. How we doing? How we doing back here? Installing. Dope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss this to you. Okay. So, no stickers. pressure. Good, because I can't, I can't throw. <laughs> I just need to show under the virtual box. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yes. Yeah, oh welcome. yeah, that's what that's what they do, right, Graham? You just go and import that dot b box or whatever in the virtual box yeah. GUI, and then can you? Really? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Go. So you have to open that well, up in Sigwin um, or Why don't you, instead of uh, opening it with VirtualBox directly, I don't, I don't um, it's probably easier to just use Windows. Vagrant to do it. So if you kind of cancel out of that, um, and then that'll do all the right stuff. Okay. So that's that's really easy. And I just copied everything over to my machine, and then it was like Vagrant up. Do you have Vagrant? So if, no, not, if not, there's Vagrant on that USB key, so you don't have to download anything. Five is fine. Five should work. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or did you have an error? Yeah, so my, I had Vagrant 1.4. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if the Vagrant server only used to be work. It's fine. Well, if only you could like access it via like a CDN or something, it might be faster. <laughs> <laughs> I thought five worked though, so I don't know if vagrant doesn't work. Yeah, I think I mean my vagrant on something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so is everybody getting close to? We should probably cruise, yeah. keep cruising. Yeah. So that vagrant.dmg right there is what you want. Okay. Cool. Uh, do you have VirtualBox installed? No. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You'll probably want to use. Yep. You can just run Vagrant. Vagrant up. And do you have Vagrant installed? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you can just type in Vagrant up. In no. If you already have Vagrant that you copied installed, it into. And that will read the. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And when I used Windows, I had I used eShell and Emacs for everything. What's that? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I really liked it with Emacs W Win Win32. <laughs> it was good stuff. I don't know. CD Vagrant up. That's not what you want. Yeah. It's just Vagrant up. Um, so yeah, you can pop a pop a command. <coughs> Go to the right folder and figure it out. Okay. Yeah, so you can, um, when you, where's your, if you have a terminal, there you, go. How's you it going? can go um, into the directory that you copied everything off of the key into, and then you can just do, uh, make sure you have Vagrant installed, which is also in that key, and then you can do Vagrant up, and it'll use the Vagrant file that's in that directory, and it'll just do all the right stuff for you so you don't have to like start it up with the, the virtual box or anything like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, Vagrant will do the SSHing into it for you. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to like manually connect to the IP and stuff like that. It it'll just know. It should add something to your um, path, and then it should uh, do it. So if there if for, if if not, we'll figure out where it is and then get it on your path and do it there. Yeah, so you would just run that <coughs> and just do Vagrant up. But run it in a terminal. You'll have to run it in a terminal. Yeah. Um, can you, uh, can nope, you, uh, just a normal uh, terminal, like a Windows terminal, like command.exe kind of a thing. I don't know. One, one word all working. Or yeah, that probably. Yep. Yeah, that'll work. I hope. And if it doesn't, then I know there's a couple other folks that are probably better at Windows than I am, so. Can you, uh, Go back to your show. Vagrant. <coughs> yeah, yeah, you can, you can fill that. Uh, vagrant. 
So is anybody else having problems? Global yeah. Dash awesome. <laughs> Just use Docker, man. I'll make it easier. Uh huh. They can. Uh, they can come. Oh, so is VirtualBox properly installed? <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, you can quit out of that guy. And then, so are you, yeah, okay. Weird. I bet you there's a, okay, so it uses a VBox managed binary. Mm. Yeah, let's make sure that's on your path, and then that's probably what it is. I bet you VirtualBox doesn't add that to your path by default. Let me start virtual. So does anybody know, show of hands, if VirtualBox on Windows will automatically add that to your path? It usually does not. So you do have to go Windows, whatever Windows Finder is, and find it and then add that to your path manually. What? The, sorry, say Oh, the, just the directory to the virtual, to, to wherever VirtualBox is installed, right? I'll come back. This is going to work. I feel good oh, about sir. it. What's up, dude? Do you need any help? <laughs> no, not unless you give me your camera. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know how that feels. That feels like. How's everybody doing back here? Everybody have a everybody have a USB key? Oh, and you. There you go. Welcome. Wherever you want to go. There you go, sir. Have some stickers. Bam. <coughs> yeah, so that's a we pro tip. If you guys are running Windows, you gotta yeah. add VirtualBox to uh, the directory to your path. There you go. How's it going? Yeah, I right, see so you're getting. Yeah, right. so you need to go. I d we just did this. It's fantastic. You go and find the virtual box directory and add that to your path, and then it should be able to find that. You should, it should start it up for you. So you shouldn't have to if you um, if you can if close you, uh, that and close close VirtualBox. It's probably you don't need to use that directly. We're going to use Vagrant instead. So, like so Vagrant will go and it'll do all the magic to link up the box and the image and all that sort of stuff. So you don't even have to once it do, so you have it installed. So that's good. How's it going, so now guys? you can go back to your directory where you um, yeah and in your shell. There yeah. You so then you bet. can. Um, so did you get Vagrant installed uh -huh. too? Uh, no, Vagrant. Oh, I should have installed the next one. Yeah, time. install Vagrant, and then um, from there, after you get Vagrant installed, that Vagrant file, that's going to be, you just do Vagrant up, and it reads that Vagrant file, okay. starts up the virtual box, and doesn't show any GUIs and stuff like that, and you're good to go. How long do we have for this? Is it 10.30? Yep. Okay. It doesn't actually take that long. Yeah. This is, this is the hardest part. Yeah. So uh, show of hands for us, how many people have VirtualBox and Vagrant installed and have successfully Vagrant upped? It's not bad, about half. And how, about how many people have kind of gone above and beyond and started running Docker with it and have started pushing yeah. that up to Karina? How many people have, have containerized like all the service it? running? I did, I did it last yeah, night. I did <laughs> so if anybody wants a Docker Compose file that lets you run everything in Karina, let me know. 
uh, which I'll in say that again. Mm -hmm. you, have a, uh, you have an install designate. Don't do that yet. <laughs> That's gonna we're gonna walk through the steps in that to show you all the steps of how to get it installed and stuff like that. And so uh, some of the stuff is already sorted out, like OpenStack client, but um, that bit is not. So we'll go through all those pieces. Also, what we're doing is not exactly that. So. What's that? Did I say it wrong? That script is not exactly what we're going to do. Hey, yeah. what's up? Yeah. Yeah, it should be. I think somebody over there said they had the they had VirtualBox yeah. 5.0 and it worked. Then somebody back there said they had VirtualBox 5.0 and it didn't work. Yeah, you probably need to upgrade Vagrant. That's yeah. Which we found back there. Mm -hmm. should be fine, yeah, that should be fine. So you can just walk back to our CDN person. <laughs> and you can we get a crossover cable and connect you guys together for a second. <laughs> yeah, we should just do uh, cloud servers. Just give them a key template. Just give them a key with the SSH key on it. Yeah. Put them in a container. Put it in a container, like an actual little just box. <laughs> just get them, get them on the server. Yeah. Docker, run. There it is. Demo, and they'll be good to go. Just don't get on the host and Docker kill all your friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I rebooted. Docker, RMI. Oh, sorry, I totally forgot to come back. So is anybody else having problems or need, needs yeah, little help? Be, yeah, that should be fine. That should be fine. Actually, you can delete, you can delete that line entirely. We're not even using that. Uh, okay. But, yeah, doing that, it comes out. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's good to know. I've, I've known people with dependency problems. It's a hard problem. You can't just, you know, you can't just, it doesn't just go away. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. I can't install VirtualBox because I, sometimes my Python packages are too low and sometimes they are too high. Oh, see, this is, this is, don't get me started on this, because, what's that? Do I know Windows? Oh, um, you have to install Windows, but it works on Windows. Yeah, yeah. Was, were they able to just open up a shell and Vagrant up and Vagrant SSH gram? In, in Windows? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, we had to add VirtualBox to the to the path. The directory of VirtualBox needs to be in your path in order for Vagrant to find out where that is. I guess we should really like get a, find a Windows box and try this. Yeah. No, I don't either. <laughs> oh, I installed Windows on my Mac so I can play games. All right, we're doing the demo on Windows. No. <laughs> Does anybody else need like a key or stickers or help? High or fives. Something to drink or. <laughs> hey, what's up? Just high fives. Oh, high fives? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Now that I can do. That's easy. So we'll, we'll probably give it another five minutes here or so and get started. I don't think the... This is the hardest part. Everything else about designate is so easy. Works in dev stack. Oh, really? See, there you go. A++. plus plus. I mean, didn't... Two plus plus workflow. Moving on. Well, then somebody, somebody needed like eight gigs or 16 gigs of that. Sorry, say that again. <laughs> Any? I have it up and running. Mm -hmm. I can only SSH because. So you probably need an SSH client on your path. I'm guessing. Oh. That's most likely what it is. So, um, or at least like, so if you have Putty installed, that probably works. I bet you Vagrant's pretty smart because they go, yeah, that's probably all you need. Okay. Yeah. If that doesn't work, though, let me know. So this filler, this filler needs help here, Eric. Oh, I'm sorry. 
installed Vagrant already. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do next? So, um, where's the folder that you installed the stuff from the USB file? Okay, so you want to go um, for the no wherever the USB file is, um, or, the, or wherever the USB stuff is that has the yeah. Okay, so you'll want to um, you just installed Vagrant, and you had virtual boxes already sorted out. Okay, so what you're going to do is open a shell, so like command.exe. Yeah. Okay, and then. If you still yeah. need help, could you uh, raise your hand? So, like, if you uh, if you're if you're lost and alone, yeah, two over there. That's it. Everybody else is perfect. Yeah, I don't believe yeah. that. What's up? It doesn't. So we'll go. Um, so you you want to change into the direct this directory where you copied everything into? Okay, and then um, so now you have Vagrant installed. You can try running Vagrant up. No, you don't even have to do the DMG. You can just you do Vagrant um, space up. Space? Yeah, like you can get rid of the um, version number that you have there. Yeah, just do Vagrant. Nope, just up. No, uh, up. UP. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so uh, yeah, do that and then find that. That private key. Okay, so now yeah, it can find VirtualBox. So what you have to do is you um, yeah. go to your program directory and figure <laughs> out where that was installed, and then you have to add that to your path. So in my path, I add in my program directory where, where VirtualBox is installed. Okay, so what do I add? This path, this path I need to add. Or? No, so oh, um, if you go over to this dude right here, this Unable window, and then go to, um, I guess it's. The VirtualBox. No, it's going to be like on your actual what, uh, what PC, mean? like the, um, I don't know where those things are. Like application directory, wherever that one is. <laughs> hey, what's up? Okay, cool. I will I'll bring that around. Okay. Can you just go up? Is there somebody, okay. there were Let's other people up. that were still lost. The little needed help. Up, up arrow. Was it you guys? No. Ooh, well, I think it was. Yeah, so pro I think program files. Okay, yeah. I'll get you in a second. And then looking for a virtual box there. Let's probably just scroll down a little bit. How are we doing here? Okay, so maybe, yeah. Oh, is it Oracle VirtualBox? Yeah. Uh, do you have VirtualBox installed? Yeah, so it's probably an Oracle. Okay, and then VirtualBox. <laughs> there you go. So now that you, this is the path. That's the one you want to add to your path. Then, um, yeah. So I don't know. To the, you need to go to the yeah. folder that has the vagrant file in it. I think, I think it should so no, be it is right there. Yeah, give it a try. Just do vagrant up the again. Virtual box see if that 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 we gave you needs to be there. And then the, uh, oh, okay, so queue out of that. Hit the exit. And then um, go to contr your control panel. Yeah, like the. Uh, the thing in the like the dot vbox file that's on this so drive, the Windows, it's and the vagrant file need to be in the same folder. Yeah. And then you should vagrant. And then up, I and think there is. Yeah, you want to edit uh, the path in your workshop dot virtual box right there. Yeah. Yeah, you need that. Hi. Yeah, this is looking closer. Uh, I think that's right. Oh, environment variables, that's the guy you want. Yeah, so there's your path, so you're going to edit that mm -hmm. that value. And then you want to do it at the very end and do, uh, yeah, I think it's colon. Open up your colon. 
and find the uh, yeah find yeah, the semi that has the semicolon in the uh, uh, dot yeah, box and then image. put that path to the oracle. And then you should page. be able to bake or not like wherever. Uh, yeah. Now, so uh, on the on the flash drive that we gave you, the uh, there was there was an image like a dot. Yep. Should be box. Mm -hmm. box. Yeah, right there. And then uh, you hit. Okay. So you want to be in this okay. folder right here. And then do CMD. Or, that or is it? Well, should yeah. reread yeah, your yeah, path. Yeah, you so that. now you can go to to that same directory that you were in. Yep, that's the one. So now you can just run Vagrant up. And cross our fingers. <laughs> okay, so you you should uh, in in here um, install this virtual box win.exe, I think. And then once that's installed, it should use the same. Um, Need to do what? No. Okay. How do you do that? I'm offering my time. <laughs> okay. Cool. You got it. Sweet. Okay. Cool. Great. Yeah. Oh, right on. Okay. Yeah, you need to uh, use what was it? Put, putty what? Putty gen. You need to use putty gen and convert that key, that open SSH key, and use that. Do you know? How to, do you know how to do that? Can you help him? Dude, I run OSX and it's now you get to go. <laughs> Nothing has been yeah. better. You're rocking. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's better. <laughs> Nothing is better. All right, how are we doing, mm -hmm. folks? We should probably get started yeah, here. Yeah, let's get, we can move along. If, uh, if you still need help, uh, maybe flag down one of these guys. They'll see if they can get you going. Uh, otherwise, wherever you uh, vagrant up and vagrant SSH'd into, just go ahead and uh, pop yourself in there. And we'll uh, get started here. So you can close that. Yes. So were you, were you having problem getting SSH going? Mm? No, it's uh, really Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> I don't even need it. Be fine. Oh, 
Oh, because you're in a virtual machine and you're running in another virtual machine, like you said. So um, I think we think it's the. Oh, yeah, good call. If you look in your vagrant file and edit that, you can do. Uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, and then uh, config. Zen oh, you want to do it? I think it's dot guest what the port. What are you saying with your words? I think. Okay. Oh, do you have a mic? All right, cool. They will be available. Um, uh, we let me look were editing quick. them recently, so that we will need to upload new versions. So, how do I install this thing? So, first off, uh, I'll introduce the three of us. Uh, I'm Graham Hayes. I'm the designated PTL. Uh, I work for Hewlett Packard. Um, Tim Simmons is one of the members of Designate Core, uh, and he's a engineer in the Rockspace DNS team. And Eric Larson is uh, one of the other Designate developers who also works for Rackspace. So, yep, that we've been through this step. So as we start to go through this install, uh, Tim is going to walk through how we get Designate up and running. Sweet. All right, so uh, first thing you're going to want to do is get to your shell. So uh, I'm here. Is there, can everybody see that? That yeah. looks pretty big. All right. Free people in back, maybe. Like, yeah, well, if he can see it, then we're good to go. All right. So uh, first thing you're going to want to do is CD into the designate directory. So we're actually going to install the designates. So uh, the uh, pip install, sudo pip install the requirements. Yeah, so like you can do like So that's. One more line right there. Oh, sudo pip install dash r requirements dot text. Uh, normally you wouldn't sudo pip install something, but this is just a it's just a box. Like it's just a virtual box, so just a VM. So who cares? You can just start typing a new line. Yeah. And it should go pretty <laughs> quick uh, because most of that stuff is either already installed or, or uh, in the in the pip cache. SSH dot SSH dot What's that? Support. What's yeah, here. You should just be able to go and just say um, equals. Okay. Yeah, and then um, something else. So also, so this is uh, five, six, mostly uh, what I'm what I'm doing here is mostly yeah, on in the same direct in the same That's directory that designate that. that that you like before you see the into and designate like the bigger and home directory. There's a dots. There's a install designate dot sh. Um, we're mostly working from that. Like that should work to get you pretty much all the way to the end. Um, so if you get lost somewhere, you can kind of you can pop open that and uh, find where we are, and you should you should be helped. Or if you like want to do this again later, you can. What's up? It's it's just in the vagrant home directory. It's install designate dot sh. Uh, no, no, do not run that because then this demo is kind of pointless. I mean, you can just kill it and run it again. But you know, maybe if you want to do it later, you know, show all your buddies back at the office. I'm sh I'm sure they'll be very interested to know. Um, yeah, and if you have any problems, hit us up in the, the uh, port was OpenStack dash DNS room on Freenode. That's so where we hang out. Happening. So if you if you wanted to do that, we can help <laughs> you out. All right, so uh, we're gonna move on. What? Yeah, you just need to run this command right here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's uh, Let's see. That's ls. Oh, okay. So you want to go and change. All right. So we're gonna move on. So uh, you should be in the in the designate directory, and then we're just gonna install. Actually, install designate. So just pip install dash dash e is is editable mode, which you probably don't need to do, but uh, we're going to anyway. Oh yeah, I probably do need sudo. Vagrant into vagrant. I wonder if that's the problem. 
if that makes sense. So what that what that does is install, like basically runs the setup script for designate so that it resolves its dependencies and uh, puts its binaries in the right place. That one right there, or this mm -hmm. one? Let's try that though, because I think I can figure it. So you have. <coughs> try doing rich vagrant. Uh, vagrant. Just do lowercase vagrant. Uh, vagrant. Like vagrant. Yeah. Let's see where that is. Yeah, so that's good. So just try and do LS right there. Oh, you're in, you're in, you're in that thing. So you're gonna want to go to. Um, you want to go to the um, wherever you the um, wherever the USB files are. Go to that directory. What's up? And virtual box. Yeah, so you need to uh, <coughs> send go to the directory that this stuff is in, and then just vagrant uh, run vagrant, vagrant up uh, and vagrant SSH. And that should get you in. <coughs> and vagrant SSH. Is that what's going on? Let's yeah. try to yeah, open yeah, so up a just normal command directory. terminal. And if you're uh, like not your um, Siglin one, just try it in. in <coughs> uh, whatever the terminal this is, just Dot, do a normal yeah. um, command. It inst so it install it uses the uh, local mm -hmm. setup.py file and designate yeah. to yeah, install yeah. Command designate and its dependencies. Thing. Like if you go to your if they're not installed, just run yeah. command.exe. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From yeah from that directory. Yeah. 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 Just figure it out. No. You don't have to hit run. You might run into a problem. Oh yeah. You so you should do it there. quick. So you'll just sooner rather than later. Just go to the same directory. That oh yeah. So you'll you'll have to add VirtualBox to your path. Yeah, flag down one of these guys, and they should be able to help you out. Yeah, you bet, man. <coughs> There's another guy that needs help back there. There's so is that the directory? That's not the directory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so there you go. Cool. So now mm -hmm. there, type vagrant up. Mm -hmm. Just like you did there, but just do it in. You can do multiple mm -hmm. sessions to the same port. And now cross your fingers because it's an important part of the thing. Okay, <laughs> okay so, so cool. recap, so we'll pip install do. requirements. So now open up your pip install dot. control panel and add. With the you sudos. You want to add All right. uh, the directory to your virtual thing. So like wherever in programs directory, it's like programs or Oracle, I'll add it to your path and that'll do it. So I'm going to take you through, there, the, the config file for designate is already in place. Um, it's in uh, the designate folder, etsy designate, designate.conf. Um, but it's also in um, just the home directory. So I'm going to take you through kind of the fine, just a, a few of the highlights of this real quick. Um, uh, it's either in, it's in the home directory as designate.conf.workshop, mm -hmm. or it's in the actual one that designate will use is in home vagrant designate, Etsy designate, designate.conf. So you can do vagrant SSH. So mm -hmm. see basic stuff here like state path and log directory, it's not, not terribly, terribly important. Most of the config that we're using here is default. Um, even this stuff right here, like off strategy keystone, uh, that's that's the default. Um, okay. so now enable the two APIs. Have, the V1 API is deprecated, so or, don't uh, use that yes, if you, you uh, so if you're good. if you're going home after so this. Um, the basic keystone information there. Um, um, what's that? Open. Oh, try it again. Uh, we're actually going to use it for something really quick, so we, we want to keep it true here. Oh, wait, no, 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 sorry. Just do, uh, actually, let's 
So is your database connection is in storage SQL Alchemy. Um, so that's that's just copy that's important. Yeah. You know. um, You're gonna want to close this. And I'm gonna take you to kind of the kind of the most important part. New one. Yeah. Is this this bit right, right here? Okay. Um, this this is all filled out for you, so don't feel like you need to you know change it or whatever. But I just want to explain briefly what this is. Um, so this is actually the place where the, the DNS servers that you're going to use are configured. So um, it's kind of broken up into two pieces. That would be targets and name servers. So the easiest way to think about that is that targets are the actual thing that you are changing or that you're going to perform change on. So if DNS is uh, sending a notify to do a zone transfer, it's going to send it here. If it's going to, oh, yeah. um, you know, make a make a database call like it is here uh, for Power DNS, it's going to do that here. If this was bind, this would be where you were doing RNDC calls, uh, anything like that. And then the name server is that is actually the place that designate will make sure that the change went live. So designate will ensure that the action that you took in the target uh, had the desired result in the name server. Um, so you can imagine a situation where if you have a uh, master slave yeah, um, replication yeah. or uh, you're pushing out somewhere and then, that, then some other out of band step yeah, is happening that you'd want to go and check um, before designate said, hey, this zone or this record is active and ready for resolution. You'd want to actually go and check the place that it needs to be resolving. Um, so that's, that's kind of a nice thing that designate yeah, will yeah, do for you. It has to if you have any questions about that, just shout them out right now. Because there's no way that was that simple. C yeah. <laughs> and then do putty again. Okay. Yes, but we've done that for you, okay, so you yeah, in this demo. Thing, yeah. Then, uh, yeah. So the first thing that you'll need to use designate is, is in fact the DNS server, Power DNS, DNS bind, okay. NSD. Um, is it here? There's other drivers. You can write your own too. <laughs> yeah. It's. Yeah, be, be sure to check out like when you get back um, that there's another talk going on right now about getting your uh, instance you name. Um, this one? It's attaching DNS names to Neutron ports and Nova instances, uh, which is going to be pretty, pretty great. Yes. All right, so uh, I think we're going to move on here. Uh, we did, we kind of showed you the config. Um, we're just going to make a couple of directories here. So we're in, uh, let's just go back to the home directory and make their logs and state. <laughs> I don't know that state is actually used in this one, but um, logs def definitely is. We're going to, we'll have a, we'll have a problem here if you don't just create a <coughs> log directory. So you want to create um, that, Jesus Christ. You want to create that directory. <laughs> All right, so the next one, is we're, we're going we're gonna to get a little crazy here. Uh, we want to create the database that Designate is going to use if we haven't uh, already. Yeah, a little bit, but yeah. not much. Yeah, if we want to repeat this at home. It'll, it'll still work. Do you want that? Is that helpful? Oh, yeah, that would be helpful. <coughs> so uh, does everybody, everybody done? I bet if you just do create database designate, you'll probably be fine for now. But you know, it's, if you were doing this on, on the official, this is what you would want to do. 
Um, so we want to go ahead and do the same thing for power DNS. Which has probably already been done for you, so. Yep. Sweet. No, no. I mean, you can drop it and create it again if you want, but it'd probably be silly. Got it. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get, um, I think this has probably already been done too, but it's, it bears mentioning. Um, we want to get the UUID of the pool that we're using. So uh, just open up the config file, either home vagrant designate .conf .workshop or home vagrant designate etsy designate designate .conf. Um, And then you want this uh, pool ID right here. And this should be the same for everybody. Um, so it should be line 165. Seven, or 167. Nine, four, yeah. C, 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 2, C, dash. What's that? Um, it's either home vagrant, designate.conf.workshop, or home vagrant, designate, Etsy, designate, designate.conf. So you want to snag that uh, UUID. and run designate manage power DNS sync. So, so, like that didn't actually do anything, right, Graham? Like that already, that had already been run, probably. Mm -hmm. Check the version. Check the version. Whatever's in your config is the UI, no, UID. Cool. It's already been done for you, so it shouldn't matter anyway. But yeah, that's that's the wrong UUID. Yeah, it should, it should be the, it should be the We're, we'll, yeah. Yeah. So the the do you, the one that you actually want. Oh wait. It is the pool target. Lol, okay, just kidding. So the, the one that you actually want is uh, line 266. Because it's syncing the target. Yeah, because it's syncing the target. <laughs> you see, I told you it was confusing. <laughs> it seems like a documentation bug. Yeah, that's, that's one of the, the one of, this is one of the things that we're working on fixing in this cycle is making that, making that kind of process simpler. So it is the right one. So now that we've uh, synced PowerDNS, which was, again, probably already done, but if, if, it, if it made any changes, you'd want to uh, restart PowerDNS. Jesus. That's PDNS, not PowerDNS. Yeah, we doing good. Or? I'm giving up. Sorry. <laughs> Got, we do. We, we do have thirty minutes, right? It is ten thirty. 
Yeah, so what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, start all of the designate services. So, so what you'll want to do um, is uh, pseudo service designate API start, designate central start, designate MDNS start, and designate pool manager start. No, it does not. The order does not matter. Yeah, they're they're actually all pretty small, pretty pretty contained services. Which uh, config files do those services actually read? Those are reading um, Etsy designate. Yeah, designate home conf. vagrant designate Etsy designate. Oh, okay. So designate dot conf. No, it shouldn't. It, sh it should be the home vagrant designate Etsy designate designate.conf that's going to be, that's going to get changes. The designate.conf.workshop is there as an example. I think in the past we've had, uh, we've had changes in there that we wanted people to copy to the other one, so we, we had it there. <coughs> Has everybody got these services started? Ready to rock? Cool. Uh, so we're going to uh, prepare Keystone. So if you're in the, uh, the Vagrant home directory, you should source the admin credentials that are in there. So source openrc.admin. And uh, that just, that just like, sets a few environment variables um, for, for the, the various uh, OpenStack clients that we're going to be using. So the next thing is to create um, the service and the endpoint in Keystone. So this um, this this command is in that install script. If you if you want just wanted to copy it, but it's uh, they're actually not too bad. You don't actually need the description, but we're gonna go ahead and put it in there anyway. Everything will not work at all. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't just have a good description. <laughs> so that was uh, that again. Just to and if you if you guys are having trouble seeing it again, that's it. They're in the install that install script that's in the, your home directory, so you can grep for Keystone and maybe probably see it there and copy it. <laughs> You also need to create the endpoint, so that'd be the uh, the endpoint for designate. Is there no? Designate API runs on port nine thousand one by default. Public public curl, public curl. Yeah. <laughs> Add mineral. Is everybody, everybody good there? No. Not yet? A <laughs> little bit. 
this is obviously really important because users and clients are going to go to Keystone to look for you know, the DNS service. So that will get you, um, that service needs to exist. And then once it pulls the service, it's going to be like, OK, what are, the, you know, what are the URLs? What are the endpoints? And then you know, that's how your client is actually going to know uh, where to go. You know, someone might look at their catalog to see where, you know, where's the endpoint. This is how it actually gets in there. You can also, um, just for like development or playing around, you can run designate in uh, no off mode. Um, so that's in that, I remember in the API section, we had auth strategy equals keystone. If you auth strategy equals no auth, then there's just no authentication. Um, and it, it actually listens for a couple of uh, key headers, HTTP headers, that will um, kind of still provide you with multi-tenancy even though you don't have authentication. Um, so if you have some other auth strategy, you can do that. So like say in the uh, install designate.sh that's in the home directory, if you search for Keystone, you'll find these two commands. Um, so I think, I think we're going to move on here, unless anybody else. Yeah, all right. So we're going to make sure that the uh, designate client is installed. So you need to cd python dash designate client. And we do the same uh, requirements dance we did earlier. So pip install dash r requirements dot text. And then we'll do pip install dash e sudo sudo pip install. locally there. So what that did, by the way, uh, there's already the OpenStack designate client, or sorry, OpenStack client, Python OpenStack client package, ins or uh, Python package installed. So when you install the Python designate client package, it will go ahead and uh, add a plug in there. So when you do, you can do OpenStack uh, command, de designate commands, subcommands. Lo loads them as entry points. There's so. way too many X, Y client names that I get screwed up. In. I mean, like, there's plenty of commands here. You'll be fine. Just just pick the, pick the designate ones out of all of that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so are we good to go? Yeah? Everybody happy? Sweet. All right. Um, are, are you guys excited? Because it's time to actually do something. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, think, I think Eric's going to do uh, some, some CLI demos here for I'll get for on you. for a second. Yeah, we'll get you. So the last two commands, just so uh, oh, someone asked, was um, sudo pip install. Our requirements.txt and then sudo pip install e period. Yeah, we're not actually doing that one. And you can always go and go. Someone didn't remap their caps lock key, it looks like today. <laughs> that's yeah, going to be bad. Good. Okay, so um, is there a squared away before I keep moving on? Yeah, silence is, is yes, unfortunately. So, um, so what we're going to do now that we have a actual running designate and that sort of thing thing going, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to start operating with this. We're going to actually start using it. So, real simple thing is we're going to we're going to go and uh, oh, we didn't add. Let's move on. So. This is what, everything we installed, nice diagram. It's great. Uh, yeah, now we're using the service. So operating on designate. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, so there we go. So what's the, 
So first things first, um, typically you'd have uh, you need to configure a name server when you have designate. So in this case, this is some, not something you do like all the time, but it's something that you typically have to do if you're developing or getting set up. So you run uh, designate client, and what is it? Server. So server, create. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I always mess that up. Create. And one thing, if you're ever confused, like I always am, help. Look, there's a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to go um, designate. Server, server create, and since I'm not sure how that works offhand, oh, that didn't help me. Server create, uh, and I just do it. So ns dot dash dash name. is his name. Yeah. Thanks. And what this is doing is making sure that the uh, zones that designate creates have an ns record. So you have to tell designate, like, hey, this is what I want the NS records to be for this zone. Um, and that's what this is doing. Otherwise, if you try and create a zone without that, it's, it's going to be like, ah, I, don't know what to, I don't know what to do. Does it look right, Tim? Did you run? Yeah, yeah I hit enter. <laughs> oh, you did it. I hit, a, I hit enter. Yeah. That's not coming back. Yeah. Does it look right, Tim? Oh. Yep. Oh, you need a source uh no, the admin for the bar is there. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was Keystone that was not able to connect to. Is Keystone running? So we're gonna, we gonna demo a live debugging session of Designate. <laughs> See what's in Keystone live. Or if you are live. Central. Wait, sorry, what? It's calling centrals. So to do a restart central.
uh, check the config file. Oops. Uh, grab for rabbit. Find awesome. rabbit in there. Dot workshop is fine. There it is. So it's using a guess by default. That should be fine. And rabbit and fears. Can't use the guest user for some reason. Yeah. So if you guys are still blocked, let's just go ahead and uh, we'll just run the install script and it'll go through everything that we did and make sure that we did everything right and make sure we didn't miss anything. So um, I'm going to do that. Nope, you don't have to vagrant score. You can just right there. To, you can just run it. Nope, you can just run it. Yeah, it'll it'll, it'll break at the very end on yeah. on something, but don't worry about it. There we go. So yeah. So if you just run the <laughs> install script. Yeah, apparently it works. Yeah, so, so we probably just had a typo or something somewhere here and there. Yeah. Uh, which made that happen. So back on track. Magic of automation. I think that's a lesson, everybody. <laughs> let's let's not uh that's not a, this is a positive. It's it's okay <laughs> if the, the script will actually fail at the very end. Um, yeah, and that's just but it, but yeah, it, it, it did all the, all the need fall, so It'll you guys fine. are good to go. So, um, so now that we have a name server, that means we can actually start doing things with it. So let's go ahead and we'll create a new zone. So we can run the OpenStack client and we can zone create. So uh, we can go and say help. So when, it, when we run these commands, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use help just to uh, help me not make terrible, stupid mistakes and know what I'm doing, but also just so you guys can see that there is uh, some reasonable help, help documentation. So when you get stuck or you have a question, just run help and see, it, see what you can find. So here we're going to create a new, new zone. So uh, you can see we take a, com a positional argument so that the, the zone name is what we take. And um, then some other stuff like email, type, TTL, that sort of stuff. So we're going to go and do OpenStack, zone, create, and we're going to create a uh, domain called short.io and note that there is a trailing dot at the end if you guys don't keep up with DNS sort of stuff every day all day long you got to have a dot at the end oh yeah sorry so zone create short.io and then we're going to go and do an email and say admin at short.io. No trailing dot because it's a real email address. Uh, we're going to create that guy. So that created the, um, our new zone. Uh, so now we have an awesome new zone in, in our, in our uh, database. So we want to add an A record. So we want to say, let's, let's give this guy an IP. So we're going to go and um, so if you've got no servers configured, that means that you need to run designate client and add a server. So designate server create name and then we'll call it ns.demo.com and I'll create 
dot. Again, like I said, if there's one thing you take away from this is that DNS adds dots at the end of stuff. I don't know, you know, it's just, it's what they do. So if it, while people are getting a little bit uh, associated, I heard a why. Why do they have a dot at the end? Do you want me to try to explain this? Because I can. Okay, so the way, the way DNS works is that um, that dot is effectively the top level of top levels. We all think .com, that's top level domain. Guess what? It's not. Dot is where it really starts. That's where the world begins. So that's our big bang. And so from there you go dot and then com is the first segment of it and then com, dot, etc. On and on and on. So that's, that's why you have a dot at the very end. So. In this designate server create. So basically, just to be clear, so designate, um, I'll show you guys in the slides even. Yeah, so in this, in this awesome diagram you, you see here, if you can see my mouse, you see there's this pool manager, and the pool manager talks to a back end, and so we have, to, uh, we have to give that back end some name servers and give them a name. So that's what that's doing when we run our command. We're going and giving the, one of these name servers a name and say, hey, this, this name server that we have running this bind instance, we're gonna call that ns.demo.com. And so that's what that does. Typically, this is something you would do, it's a very high, le or, sorry, low level operation that happens. So it's not something you would typically have to do. Like for example, if you had a, a private cloud that someone's running designate for you and doing this, you're not gonna have to do that. That's something that the operator should be probably handling for you. So, so could you have, uh, say, power DNS and bind server running both? Yes, yes, so that's what the pools are for. So you can have one pool that's running bind and one pool that's running power DNS and then you can do things to, to route, for example, a certain zone you to a have, certain pool or what You could have multiple targets in the same pool running different name servers too if you wanted to. Uh, and the, the server that you create, the server create, how do you, how is that? Uh, That's, uh, sure. That's the NS record that ends up on those uh, domains that power D, that designate creates within power DNS. So um, if, you know, for example, when you create a domain at Rackspace, you're gonna get NS, ns2.rackspace.com to go and put as the uh, name servers at your registrar, at the domain registrar, so that when then when people do DNS queries for your thing, they're gonna be like, oh, like where, like who's authoritative for this zone? And it's the people, you know, it's those, the ones in the NS records are the ones that are authoritative. So when you, when designate creates that for you, it's like, okay, this is where I'm gonna be serving this DNS zone. So you should tell people to come, you know, come to me when they want to resolve it. Yeah, so that server create, and just in case, just to like make it clear, because it might have sounded like, this actually goes and spins up a bind instance or something, it doesn't do any of that stuff. It's only dealing with the NS records for that, for those zones. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on. So we're gonna go ahead and create a record set. Um, so that's going and, and actually creating a zone, uh, like for example, an A record, we're gonna give this guy an IP address. So we, uh, again, I did help, so you can see what that looks like. We, we're gonna uh, have a zone ID, and in this case, we can use the, um, our, our domain name in this case, so short.io, uh, and then the record set name, and then we're gonna add a type, an A record type. Um, so we're gonna go open stack. Actually, I'm just gonna go like that. Open stack create, record set create um, for short.io. And we're going to create one that, that is uh, do short IO is what we're going to call that name. And then the type is going to be an A record. Oops. Record, sorry. There it goes. Records, because we need IP addresses. So 10.0.0.1. .0 .0 nope, that's just a name. And then we'll do one more just because why not? HA, you guys high availability. There we go, so we just created some uh, two, two A records for this, this awesome thing. Uh, no. <laughs> so here we can go and see this is created, uh, and we'll go ahead and dig against our local host and say short port short.io. And you can see there's our NS record, so you can see our name that we were looking for, you have ns.demo.com. So there you can see our, um, that's where that name server create came in. And then if we wanna go 
what is that, plus, is that right? What do I call that, do? Oh, it hasn't gone there yet. But so we could uh, eventually dig. How did I mess it up? That's fine. I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, I think you did that. I think I did that wrong. So here, let me back it up. So that's fine to have do.short.io.short.io. .short .short .io. That's okay. We're going to go. Uh, so basically what we're saying is if you wanted to create a uh, record set for, um, we're going to do that. Yeah. So now you can see in the, in the table there you have the name is do.short.io, and then the records are there. So now we're going to dig. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and, and dig that. Digging. And there is our A record. So that's that's awesome. We just we're just making DNS happen here, you guys. It's pretty sweet. Okay. So one thing you'd want to be doing as a as an admin. So notice, remember when we logged in? We logged in. We had our admin credentials. So we're gonna go and uh, create a PTR record. You're not getting that that same A record. Oh, I'm sorry for the. You mean for the next command? Or did I just mess y'all up? <laughs> Is that helpful? Oh. For the create creating the record set, that guy. Okay, sorry about that. And these, uh, just so you know, if you guys are stuck or have a question, again, open stack, record set, create, help. Try checking out the help thing, and you can, he's got a question too. Yeah. Um, so one thing we see, just so, I, one of the things that you would want to do probably as an administrator, because this, this adding an A record, something like a client would probably do through an API, you might have, you know, somebody's going to go and do that programmatically. But one thing you probably wouldn't necessarily do would be something like a, a PTR record. So a PTR record's gonna say, hey, IP address, what domain works for this guy? So it's like a reverse lookup. So email, for example, would be something that uses that to make sure, oh yeah, you're actually sending this from a, a valid IP address that you should be sending this from. Sorry. I'm gonna, I'm, so we're gonna walk through how to create a PTR record. So one thing I was gonna point out is that there is a PTR um, set of commands in the OpenStack client, but that's actually specifically for floating IP addresses. So um, we're not gonna do it with this PTR thing because we're not running some floating IP thing. So instead though, we're gonna actually do this the old school way. We're gonna go and create a, uh, an actual um, a rec a PTR record using the in adder ARPA piece that you gotta do. So um, I'm gonna actually pull this up over here because, oh no I'm not, that's gonna take too long. So we're going to go and create a new zone. And the zone we're going to create, we're going to go and, and say, um, so basically what, what you do is if you have an address like uh, 1.2.3.4, when you create the in, in adder.arpa, um, the reverse, you have to go and say 4.3.2.1.in adder.arpa. So what that does is that's like a, re it's, this is, if you're thinking about this, when you do a dig on, or, and a reverse lookup on, on a uh, IP address, what happens is dig will go and do this little thing to, to look it up for you. So this is a little bit of DNS backstory here. So we're gonna create, the, create this zone. Oh gosh. Tim, Tim, Tim. You gotta rebind this control, control key. I'm about to start Emacs just so I can type. 
Yeah, so I just created this zone. So what this does, this is something typically an, an, an admin would be doing because it's not something that you'd want your users doing, say, because then they could go and hijack IP addresses and things like that, and that's not cool. So we want, this is something that you would be doing as an administrator so that maybe a support ticket. I need to create a, a PTR record for this. So here we've just created this PTR record. So then we want to go and point the PTR record at our, at our short.io zone so that way when it, when it comes in, we can go and um, get that reverse lookup. So just to, uh, just to show you as well, just because if you get lost, you look up the designate um, docs. There's a how-to for this as well. No, no, no. Not that one, yeah. not that one. There it is, right? Yeah, this was probably better. Sorry. There's a there's an article that goes through how to how to create PTR records, and this is more or less what we're kind of going through, just so so you guys can follow along, because we're getting close to the end of time, like two minutes. So you can see we just created this new zone. So now, next step we want to do is we want to go and create a PTR record that points back at our example dot, dot com on that on that zone. So we're gonna go OpenStack. Uh, record set, create, and we're going to create it on our 4.3.2.1.in adder arpa. I think that's right. Uh, and then we're going to point it at the type is the PTR record and the records our short.io. I knew I did that wrong. <laughs> oh, we gotta give it a name. Reverse. Sweet. I shouldn't do the name, should I? Oh, I see what you're saying. You were saying do this, right? No, you need you need the four dot three and then I do? You need both of them. We're gonna do it again. The same thing? To me. Just four dot three. If you guys, if you guys check uh, Graham on Twitter later, sorry, sorry. You're, uh, I think he's. Are you, are you Muggsy on Twitter or Graham Hayes? Graham Hayes. He's he's at oh, Graham Hayes on Twitter. He'll tweet out all these oh. links to uh, all this stuff, and if you have questions, uh, you can hit him or uh, or me or Eric uh, on Do Twitter or like in uh, OpenStack DNS uh, on IRC. OpenStack dash DNS oh, yeah, on Freenode. Uh, we all we all hang out there. Um, Golly. Or you can send us an email, or you can drag us down the hallway, <laughs> or you can come to our place of business, or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so just, uh, just to follow up, so we created a, a PTR record set, and notice uh, how before, how I messed it up uh, with, with the name, and notice how I, I was able to create an, um, right up here. That we have create, and then this is the this is the zone that we are creating the record set on, and this is the name of the record set that they were creating. I missed a trailing dot, and that was why it tried to do it concatenated things together. So once again, you guys, what's the lesson? Put a trailing dot on everything. Yeah. I think we're pretty much out of time. If you have any questions, if any quick questions, <laughs> chat them out. Not yet. It, it, it doesn't relate to Nova Boot yet. There's code up there. There's code up for Neutron right now, and there's code going up for Nova.
I, at the moment, there's a thing called Sync. I designate Sync, which listens to events emitted by Nova and Neutron. But at the end of this cycle, hopefully, the Nova and Neutron code, Nova and Neutron will call directly out to designate when they create uh, ports on a Neutron network. And that'll handle creating all the DNS entries. something you'd want to type out in this deck. And like I said, that's the kind of thing you do once. Like, so typically if you're developing, that's like, like every, I think all of us have little in it, in it initialized things. It'll be like, oh, create this real quick. So when I start up designate, I'll have a server to do that. Also in that directory, there are some, there's an example script and a short URL script to kind of be like, oh, let's write a little URL shortener where you could create subdomains to, to just kind of play around with something. So feel free to take a look at those if that's of interest to you to see how you can mess with things like the Python bindings and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Shut down, or you can do if you exit SSH, do vagrant hold. Uh, or vagrant hold is work. Yeah, vagrant hold. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I think yeah, we're probably we're probably out of time. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks. Thanks a lot for coming out, you guys. If you feel like stickers are up front, 